Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do the first startup of this new DJI Action 2 camera. I haven't started it yet, I just only charged the device as yeah, the instruction manual says for the first time starting, make sure that the camera is charged. And I have the dual screen add-on, uh, not the power pack. So we're going to see what happens and what the uh, process is of getting this camera set up and ready to use. Uh, I have my phone here next to me because everywhere where you look um, it says something about a MIMO app, I think it's called. So I think we're going to be needing that. So yeah, I'm going to connect them together first. And let's just hold the power button and see what happens. Feel some sort of vibration or feedback. So a little bit on the screen there. Um, and just some strange language which I don't understand telling me something about a DJI MIMO. So let's see if we can scan that QR code real quick. It's not really picking it up at this moment. And there we go. To move the phone to this side. I looked in the store for the Mimo app, but I couldn't really find anything that was from DJI directly. So, yeah. There doesn't seem to be too much happening at this moment. Nothing really happening. I'm gonna see in the package if there's a different QR code. It also says DJI MIMO app. So I'm going to see if that one provides us with some better results. First thing that I notice is that this link is different as the apph5dgi.com link. The next part seems to be somewhat similar, but we'll see. There's only one button, which, yeah, or one option that seems to be a button, but I don't know what it says or what it will do to the camera. Let's see if we can type that link manually. And that should be it. I have the HTTPS and everything looks how it should be, but it isn't really doing that much as well. Hmm. We have a quick start guide. This is another QR code, which is also directing us to that same page. This is the full quick start guide. I'm not really getting anywhere with the app at this moment. Uh, so yeah. I think we're just gonna go for it. I don't know if the other screen shows the same thing. So it's the same on both sides now. There's a little manual icon. And I think we'll just go for it. Put phone on site. If anything happens, I'll let you know. Let's see what this does. Okay. So when you hit that button, which I don't know if 
Uh, I don't have any clue what it says. It seems to be working straight away. It's at 1080p 30 and some weird language which I still can't understand. It seems some sort of a settings menu. I don't know what that is. I don't know if this is normal, but... It's like, the, like five clips on it. I don't know. This is really weird, but okay. I don't know what to make of that. But you can zoom out a bit and you get sort of an overview of the clips that are recorded. Maybe something went wrong in the creation process of this device that it started recording somewhere in the factory or something. I don't know. No clue what that says. Let's cancel that. Let's see if we can do anything here that looks recognizable, so to say. Some sort of settings item. Trying to find something that says language. Let's see, globe, English. Yes. Okay, this makes it a lot more clear to work with. I still think, think it's really strange <laughs> that there are already five clips on it with some random recordings, but okay. Uh, it says about 20 gigabytes. No SD card. I don't have an SD card in here at this moment. Now let's check out the menus. Okay, this is field of view. Uh, when you swap from the right side, standard D-warp. Oh, let's use this hand. Ultra-wide. Wide, it's adjust right away or straight away. And standard D-warp. Let's keep it on that for now. There's small vibrations when you hit something, so there's a nice yeah, tactile feedback that you know that you pushed a button or did something. It seems to be at 2.7k 30. It has 33 minutes of recording time. 4k. 4k 4x3. 60 frames, Let's see what it says then. 24 minutes. And these are the weird recordings at 1080p. And that seems all fairly straightforward. Okay, this menu goes to the side. Full screen, on or off, locking the screen. When you slide from top side down, this is the storage we just looked at. You can format. In the settings menu, which we can read now, so that's a nice thing. Uh, voice control, vibration, notifications. Wireless connection, video compression, sounds, grid, anti-flicker, auto-stop recording temp, screen off when locked, it's 
clean off and recording, auto power off, LED. I assume that's the LED on this side and the other side. Um, continue last live stream language and factory reset, device info, compliance info. And that's it for the main menu or the main settings menu. And we can go to the site one more time. A pro function. You can toggle it on or off. I don't know what it does yet. Orientation lock. Brightness, I think, yeah, it's a screen brightness. Probably nice to save some battery if you need it. Voice control. I have to check into that first before I start enabling these things to see what they actually do and what the commands are. And let's see, we flip it around. Nice wide angle. You can see my current setup. I just have the Z6 uh, yeah, above me and the Ninja 5 over here. That's recording and a single light. Seems to have the same menu, but switches where the live view is. Figure out how that all works in itself. Let's see if the button on the side works. There's this button over here. It's for recording, flashes red when it's recording on both sides. Beeping noise when it starts and finishes. I don't know if this does something. That's the battery status of both. Uh, yeah, both of the modules. So the camera and the head display, battery pack, microphone thing. And it seems to be draining this one and not the camera itself at this moment. And this is the one time I think this is the zoom. Yes. I thought this was digital in-camera zoom, so it's probably just cropping in on the existing resolution or image. So that's it. I still have to check how the app is going. I can show it here. It's still loading, doing nothing. So I have no idea about that Mimo app, which I constantly refer to, or how to get it. But yeah. I can check and install real quick and search for the Mimo app. Camera is getting hotter at this moment. I think that's because it's still on 4K. Oh, hot, it's getting warm to the touch. It's nothing strange at this moment. 1080p, 1080p power reserve. Let's leave it somewhere there now. I don't see any Mimo app directly from DJI here, so. That's what I was looking for before. You can get DJI Go. It's coming up. Maybe we can go from here to DJI. It's just a bit strange that they refer to, to their app everywhere and it doesn't seem to be yeah, easy to find, so to say. I have the Ronin app that's working fine, but I don't see that Mimo app that they refer to anywhere. So I leave that for what it is now and I'll check into that later. So for now, yeah, really nice impression of how everything works. Let's see if we can just disconnect this. Just disable the screen on itself.
and it connects straight away. Yeah, nice and seamless. Let's disconnect, connect, and it's yeah, it works flawless. So that's nice, easy to use. And just for a final thing, let's power down this camera. Do it with the button below. Let's see what a single press does. Let's record. And keep it pressed and it will shut off. That's the last thing I wanted to show you. <laughs> All right, so I think I found the Mimo app. I'm here on the DJI side and this is a nice little thing. Um, this green button is flashing at this moment. So I think that's because we just used a bit of battery on the camera itself when we disconnected it. And I think it's charging now from the bottom part or the dual screen module. Um, so that's a nice little indicator. And you don't see anything on the other side. Then uh, I think I found the Mimo app when we go to the DJI site for the Action 2 and you go to the menu and to downloads. It's listed here for the App Store for Apple and for Android. So let's see what that does. Seems to be doing more than all the other links, but yeah. It's about 350 MBs, megabytes. It's quite a lot for an app, but okay. Yeah, let's just put that to the side and leave that running for a moment. Okay, so it completed downloading. Let's see what this does. Package installer. Mm, yeah, you got the user friendliness and how you should do all these extra steps. Uh, I think it should be just available in the store under their own DJI name. And it's just ease of use for the consumers. I'll read all of those in my spare time, of course. Okay. Tap here to connect the device, manage files, create it, and tap to view tutorials. Let's start with connecting the device. Sure, why not? Let's power it on. I'm just gonna go back one menu and try it again from the start. Might be faster. And there it is. That was also the code I saw earlier somewhere with the strange language. I don't see it at this moment was listed near device name so I don't know where that went but there's not really any other similar device near my phone at this moment mm, yep I totally agree with that I think I have to set that up. All right, so it's activating now. You just have to set up an account with them first and then you can do everything to continue from there. It's just a verification chat, uh, step. 
I don't have DGI care, but I do have warranty, so I don't need that for now. Okay. I guess I have to say connect. It seems busy already, so... Okay, so it creates a local Wi-Fi probably. When I look at the icon. Yeah. So you don't have internet connection or yeah, Wi-Fi when you do this because it sets up a local Wi-Fi between the devices. I thought it was connected, but apparently not. Okay, that's better. And let's tilt this up so we can see something. And just a simple record function with a microphone indicator. Photos. Okay, so this is within the device itself. You can see indicators of what is a video file and what's an image. size, timer, other options, field of view, grid and pro. Okay, pro gives you white balance, exposure alerts, histogram and photo format. Let's see. Oh, you can even shoot in raw with this camera. So it's a nice feature. Don't know which files it uses, but Might have to check that out sometime. These are all like the same settings, Wi-Fi settings and so on. No top menu. I have the ISO shutter speeds and so on here now. Quick clip, slow motion. Quick clip seems to be something about 15 seconds. I don't know what this does. motion feature the quick clip shows up as a regular clip slow motion as this tiny I don't know if that's visible it says slow this one is a normal camera icon this is an image and again normal so this is this is a normal video, this is the picture, this is a quick clip, this is a slow-mo. So yeah, it's pretty nice UI, everything's clear with what it is. Time lapse, hyperlapse. I'm just gonna play around with those. You'll see that feature plenty in coming videos, I think. So yeah some auto and some manual settings. And the zoom, just up and down. I think it's a 
well thought out and yeah easy and everything's clear in what it is how it works what it does so it's a nicely designed ui i think let's go back to the home menu it says now network connection failed i don't know why that is the device still seems to be connected and it shows here with a wi-fi icon only strange thing is you're on the camera and you have okay that might be a bit weird on camera but there's no indicator that you're connecting to wi-fi or anything else so yeah audio settings and I'm now in the video menu on this one so I think I think these are all the video settings so you have exposure white balance color field of view you can see it changing on the phone and you really have two options normal and decent like I think it will be nice and yeah, they have everything in here, but it's also easier to see and find in the app, I think. And I don't know how I can go back now. Only confirm. It's auto white balance, manual white balance. It seems to be a slight delay on the phone. It's nothing too crazy, so it's good. Okay, so that's it. That's the camera, the menu structure of the camera, the Mimo app, which I was finally able to find. So yeah, Let me turn this off, see how the phone reacts. device disconnected okay so yeah that's going to be it for this video um thank you very much for watching i hope you like this kind of setup this yeah a bit more in-depth video of these devices and the menus and how everything works if you have any questions leave them in the comments below uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more of my future content. And yeah, have a very nice day.